In this weekend of remembrance and memorials, recalling what happened 20 years ago, we wanted to pay tribute to the gentleman who was not only a pilot for American Airlines back in those days, but he was a farmer in Massachusetts. John Oganowski, who was at the controls of American Airlines Flight 11 when it was commandeered by the terrorists into the World Trade Center. He was a farmer. His brother Jim joins us this weekend on This Week in Agribusiness. Jim, as we look back over that period of time, I guess many of us wondered about how involved in farming John was. He seriously considered himself a farmer, didn't he? He did. We, we often joked, are we looking at an airline pilot or a farmer? And it, it depends on the uniform of the day. He uh, enjoyed being out on the land and producing crops, but he was also a, a teacher of others, was he not? He was. Uh, when John purchased his farm, there's three family farms here in Dracut. John purchased his in the, in the 90s. And after that, the Commissioner of Agriculture approached John and asked him if he'd be willing to host some, some uh, refugees, some immigrants that had just arrived from Southwest Asia and teach them how to farm in New England because obviously the, the, the way to farm in New England is significantly different back in their homeland. So he mentored a number of those and uh, one of them still remains on our farm today. John was also a member of the Farm Bureau Board of Directors, was he not? He was. He was a, a very active individual. Uh, there's an, actually the, the Massachusetts uh, Farm Bureau every year gives an award out in John's name for because of how much he was involved with agriculture, uh, the promotion of agriculture, uh, preserving land. John's farm is 130 acres and it's preserved as open space for eternity. Help me recall, didn't Congress play a role in that in helping set aside that land so it would never be developed? Uh, there's another piece of land in town that John was attempting to preserve uh, just prior to his death. Uh, unfortunately, John didn't get to see that land preserved, but uh, yes, the U.S. Congress, uh, through the efforts of uh, then Senator Kennedy, raised the funds to help preserve another 30 acres of land in pound. What crops are produced and, on your land today, on your farm there at Dracut, and how different is it than it was back in 2001? Well, the, the farm is doing well. Uh, I would say for the past 20 years, we've been doing very well. The weather has not cooperated very well this year, but overall things have gone well. Uh, we've had an a, a incredible good crop on hay. We grow a lot of hay, about 170 acres for the horse market, people who have a horse or two in their backyard. We also grow 10 acres of pumpkins, 10,000 chrysanthemums, and uh, your listening audience in the Midwest will probably giggle, but we grow two acres of corn stalks simply for decoration for the fall. Hey, some of our producers uh, in other parts of the country do the same thing, serving that uh, market for ornamentals, I guess you would say, along maybe with the, the pumpkins that they sell. So these weekends in September and October are very busy for you, right, Jim? It is nonstop. Uh, when the, in June, when the days are very long, uh, it, we're busy on the farm. But in the fall, on these weekends, it is nonstop from... Uh, before sunrise to after sunset, just to keep everything replenished and, and hopefully for good weather and a great crowd to show up. I have to say in the, in, during the, the pandemic of 2020, I was very concerned, but it actually turned out to be our best season ever. People were trapped at home. They were doing the honey-do list and a lot of them came out to decorate. So uh, I'm hoping 2021 can duplicate the sales of 2020. Yeah, that was a big year for agritourist operations, I know. I've always, often pointed out that in agritourism, you really have to be a people person, and obviously you are. You must love interacting with the customers. Well, you, you're, being on the farm daily, we don't have a lot, a lot of interaction with a lot of people. During that sales period of two months, I get, I get uh, the opportunity to speak to a lot of people every day, and I love it. Jim, uh, how different would the farm have been, you think, had John continued, been able to continue in the operation there? Well, I'm sure he would have kept expanding. There was uh, some other farms in town that have uh, since been sold off to development that I think John would have been actively involved in trying to preserve and raise the money to, to save them. Uh, of course, uh, 
John would have probably had a lot more of the newest and latest equipment than I do. I, I do try to stay up to date with the latest, but uh, uh, haven't done quite the best job at that. He had a Farmall 200 that he was uh, going to undertake the restoration of, did he not? Oh, boy, let me tell you about that one. Uh, when he comes, when I have a chance to meet with him again, we have to have a long chat. Uh, he purchased that from a, a fellow farmer in Dracut with the intention of restoring it. He took it apart on Memorial Day weekend of 2001 because it was a rainy weekend, couldn't do anything in the fields. Well, sadly, that tractor stayed right in the front doorway of the farm shop, completely taken apart, including the rubber off the rims. And that's where it stayed until his passing. When I took over the farm, I didn't know what I could do with it other than get the front end loader and put it on a stone wall. And a good friend of John said, if you can tell me all the parts are there, I can put it back together and restore it. And he did, and he did a remarkable job, and it's still on the farm today. And it will always remain on the farm. Jim, what a great visit you've shared with us this weekend, and we sincerely appreciate it. We wanted you to know that you and your family were in our thoughts, and we just wanted to share with the folks across the country some of the thoughts there from uh, the Oganowski Farm in Massachusetts. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for having me, and I'd, I'd like to ask you, listening audience, not only to remember my brother, but all those lost on that day, including our military. We appreciate Thank it, you. sir. Thank you for being with us. I will long remember, Mike, it was just 15 days after 9-11 at the Farm Progress Show, Lafayette, Indiana, Jim and John's Uncle Albert came up to me with a photograph of John and Albert at the show the year before. It's one of those moments that just wow. stays with you. Some of those things can be haunting. Max. That's exactly That's for sure. right.